What are you doing so much? So? Welcome to Family Business World. I have the honor of having a friend and an outstanding consultant, Andrew Frazier. Andrew, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, Dale. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I've known you for a number of years. I've participated in some of your power breakfasts and other things. But uh, I want the audience to know a little bit about you. Back, where'd you grow up? What's your background? Where'd you go to school? Tell me a little about Andrew. Um, grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Nice. Home of the Steelers, <laughs> of course. Big fan, always. Um, actually, I first started in business in fourth grade. My really? brother and wow. I had a paper route. Okay. And we delivered papers in the community, okay. which was great. We did that for five years, seven days a week. Wow. Seven days a week. Wow. Seven days a week. And it expanded mm -hmm. because since we knew everybody in the community, we actually ended up doing a lot of snow shoveling for people in the mm -hmm. community and actually mm -hmm. helped some of our friends get work as well. So early introduction to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Had an opportunity, my mom sold real estate, she sold life insurance, so great learning experiences because I would help put the papers together. And well, all. Well, so let me stop you there. So one of the things, I don't know if you saw, I wrote a blog on the website familybusinessworld.com about family business succession. Yes. And the more I write, I learn when I write, the more I see is that the, the, the succession of family businesses starts when people sweeping the floors. But even as an entrepreneur, it starts when you do grunt work. Yes. And when you're, when you're young and you do grunt work, because then you appreciate entrepreneurship more. When you start out making a lot of money, it doesn't work. So you even did that early on before you even got into a business. That's very, very impressive. Impressed. So now, now tell me more about your, your, your mom. Okay. Um, mom's pretty extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she grew up in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So actually, when she was in college, she did a lot of marching and other stuff. Mm -hmm. As well, um, in retirement. In retirement, she ran for office and oh, really? being wow, wow. Um, county councilwoman okay. in the city of Pittsburgh, one of the first ones. Oh, wow. And also, she won even though she wasn't endorsed by the party. Uh -huh. <laughs> so she had chutzpah. So chutzpah was passed down to you from generation to generation. Yes, the, yes, uh, she was a great the, uh, And so I have you on the show. As, as, as my audience knows, I have amazing family businesses, but I also have amazing advisors to family businesses. And you're, you're one of the best out there. Um, so how did you get into this, this consulting? Talk to me a little bit, and I want to hear a little about your educational background as well, but how did you, what's the progression? Well, it's a, it, you know, everybody's progression is different, right. but a lot of times what you do is you start somewhere, right. and you go different places and you come back. Mm -hmm. Like I started out with the paper route, right. um, went to school, studied mechanical engineering mm -hmm. at MIT. At MIT, great, fantastic, so fantastic. That was, and I had a Navy ROTC scholarship. Okay. So the Navy paid for it, which was great because that was the most expensive school in the country at the time. Wow, wow. <laughs> and um, I got to be a Naval officer. Uh, so you went to the Navy right after MIT? Upon okay. graduation, got commissioned the same day. Wow. And um, served as a Navy Supply Corps officer, so I ran all the business functions for a ship. Okay. So I got to learn, Fascinating. you know, retail, logistics, paid everybody, food service, so great. Experience. So you were like the chief operating officer of a ship, um, of a naval ship. Not the chief operating officer, but all the business functions. The business. Okay, really. So, okay. Okay. Know, okay. Nice. So great experience in business, and that what really led me down the business route rather than engineering. Okay. Uh, really like business, but business and engineering are similar in that they're all about problem solving. Right. Figuring right. out solutions. Just business, it's shorter term, um, and you can sort of see and implement your solutions a lot, a um, lot sooner and, and quicker. So really love business, love the problem solving. Well, wonderful. The, uh, and so after the Navy, so after, after that, what did you do? After I came out, worked for a private company uh -huh. for a couple of years, and then went back to business school at New York University, where oh, I studied nice. finance and management. Wonderful, wonderful. And then, and then after NYU, after NYU, I was an executive at New York Life for okay. seven years, okay. um, focused in financial management and investments. I got my CFA there, mm -hmm. and then had an opportunity to serve as the chief operating officer for the executive leadership com council. Well, uh, talk a, little, a lot of people don't know about that, and so I mean, this is the who's who of, of kind of African Americans in business in the United States. So t say a little about the executive leadership council. I, I, I'm amazed how many people don't know about this. Right. But it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. It's really the top African Americans in corporate America. Mm -hmm. To become a member, you really needed to be within three levels of the CEO. Wow, wow. Of or the CEO yourself, company. right? Or, you know, or right, CEO, right. and actually at the time, Ken Chenault Ken was Chenault, a member. American Express CEO. Yes. 
So um, great organization, being involved, working with these um, talented people, helping, doing training, doing um, development opportunities, supporting their, really, we were there to support their success and help mm. them be more successful and help others become successful in mm. corporate America. So, and then you had another uh, group where the up and coming, for, you know, up and coming folks, the next generation, uh, so within the big corporate America. So that was great training, yes. great experience to really see that. So after that, what did you do? Um, after that, that's when I, I started in business. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity to decide whether I wanted to go back to corporate, um, like being there, but I'm not really a nonprofit person. Right. And you know, coming back to business was great. Mm -hmm. um, already had been investing in real estate, mm -hmm. so that was a real estate crisis as well. So right, I needed to right. spend a little extra time <laughs> with my real estate, <laughs> and um, started consulting and actually teaching as an adjunct professor. Okay, where? Um, I taught at Berkeley College, okay. um, SNHU, mm -hmm. um, taught finance and accounting. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and so now how did we get into to actually consulting to, to businesses? Um, as, as I continued to grow, you know, started with consulting, built upon it, mm -hmm. um, continued to develop my skills. Um, as an entrepreneur, you do different things. So I got to. worked on the 2010 census, oh, really? okay. which was outstanding because mm. I learned my community and mm. every, you know, just met and built relationships. Mm -hmm. And you know that helped build my business. Wonderful. The, uh, so now I understand you have a video that says a little bit about your business. Yes. Why, why, why don't you tee that up? No. Okay. Uh, um, so really, my business is about helping entrepreneurs and business owners run their business more professionally so that they can grow. Wonderful, wonderful, great. Wonderful. Are you looking to grow revenues, increase profitability, or obtain financing? If so, you came to the right place. My name is Andrew Frazier, outsourced CFO and owner of Small Business Like a Pro, where the more you know, the faster you grow. I've worked with over 500 entrepreneurs and business owners one-on-one -on -one and taught thousands of people about entrepreneurship and business over the years. My expertise is in business strategy and financial management, which I use to help them be able to create a sustainable business that can run without them. And how do we do that? We focus on growing revenue, increasing profitability, and obtaining financing so that their business can grow. If that's something that interests you, I invite you to come check us out and reach out to me. We'd love to help you grow your business. Are you great, great, uh, really a great setup for uh, for your business. Um, yeah, really, um, it's amazing how much you do. I had the opportunity to interview one of your clients, Paul Stack, and just an amazing gentleman, and um, uh, really, you know, sung your praises on camera and even off camera, and really valued. Um, so, so you got this business going. So, so, say a little more about what do you do? How do you help these businesses? Okay, well, what I do, like most businesses, it's evolved over time. Mm -hmm. um, really started out a lot more coaching right. earlier on, mm -hmm. and then it moved to so, more. So executive coaching, and I always want for my audience to make sure those that have not heard it, yes. you actually work with individuals to really help them become more successful, right? Is that, yes. that really what the coaching and is? Yeah. It's helping them be, and more just talking with them, right. and giving them ideas, and you know, taking feedback, and helping them think through their strategies. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, and then it's evolved into more consulting. Mm -hmm. So that's really a little bit of coach salting. A lot of times you're talking with people, coaching them, mm -hmm. and helping them figure out what they need to do, but then they may not have the skills or the team mm -hmm. to implement it. So right. also coming in, helping to provide a level of expertise in accomplishing some of the tasks that they need to do on the consulting. And, and now, actually, a lot of my business is outsourced CFO, mm -hmm. really okay. working with organizations, one, to help them prepare to be able to get financing. Mm -hmm. So outsource, again, for those that don't know, so outsource CFO, that basically, instead of just hiring a, a, a CFO off the street, they hire Andrew to come in and really say, okay, be my CFO for a while, help me get through this difficult period, and then maybe even help me recruit a full-time CEO, CFO. Do you do that, too, or no? Um, well, the big thing is most small businesses can't afford a CFO. Right, right. Um, because it, you know, there's a misconception that finance is accounting. Right. Totally right. two different totally subjects. Different Your accountant can't necessarily do the stuff that a CFO needs to do. Right, right. So they're good at what they do, but it's different than, than it's finance. It's totally different. Right. Accounting's 
from here backwards yeah, yeah, exactly. and finances back. from here forwards. forwards exactly. So it's two different skill sets. Right. So you know when you're having cash flow issues, mm -hmm. if you need to get financing, mm -hmm. if you need to set up key, per, key performance indicators, mm -hmm. do financial projections, really strategic planning, mm -hmm. all that stuff is more of a CFO type of role, but you don't have to do it all the time, um, especially as a small business, but you need that expertise for certain things. And you pay, they pay you as a consultant, not they don't have to pay you know, all of the healthcare and all of the, you know, the, the other benefit programs, so they really get a bargain. But the other thing that I tell a lot of companies about using outside folks, whether it's IT or is that you are state of the art. See, by, by the fact that you're working with different companies gives you insight into the latest and greatest ways of doing things, right? And yes. that, so that's a real advantage of having a, an outsourced CFO. And, and having an external perspective mm -hmm. so that you can see the business in a different light mm -hmm. and share that with the organization and, and many times an owner doesn't really get to talk to their leadership team mm -hmm. in a way that they can talk to an external person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I can talk to owner in a different way than their leadership team can talk to them, especially you know if they need some coaching or maybe you shouldn't do this or whatever. I could do that a lot easier because I'm not fearful for my job. Mm -hmm. um, and my job is really to educate, expose, and bring ideas. W wonderful, and, 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 and as you know, I'm the executive director of the Fairleigh Dickinson uh, University Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and one of our programs is a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program yes. where you sit quietly, I mean, you sit confidentially with, with you know, four or five, and, and you realize how lonely it is being a CAO. Yes. And you can't often talk to your spouse, you, you can't really talk to people on your team, so you have an outsourced CFO like you. So you can really have some real open and honest conversations, and you can kind of tell them the truth. Yes. So often family business, second, third generation, people don't are too scared to tell you the truth. But you can do that. Right. And so that's a real advantage. That's yeah. a real advantage. A huge advantage. And the other thing is um, I can take a holistic approach mm -hmm. because you know, finance touches every area of the business. Mm -hmm. And I have experience working in operations in marketing, right. in technology. So I'm not just providing financial expertise. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about how you bring all that together in a holistic fashion mm -hmm. um, to, to build your business. Well, let, let's talk about it. I have here your book, of Running Your Business Like a Pro. I love this. This is a great book. It's easy to understand. I mean, what's, what's beautiful about this thing is easy to understand. And um, um, you know, where can people get this? Where, where can they find this book? Well. Uh, it's on my website, so if you want to order a signed copy, you can order it from there. And what's your website? www.smallbusinesslikeapro.com. Excellent. You can also order it through Amazon, Amazon Prime. There's a Kindle ebook mm -hmm. and also audible.com. Mm -hmm. We have the audio book, and next month we'll have the Spanish version on Amazon. So there's really no excuse for anybody not to, not to buy your book. They can get it anywhere. And, and what, I, what I like about what you do, as opposed to a lot of others, is you really break it down into component parts. You know, I don't know if you want to share some of your thoughts about, uh, about that. Right. Really working with business owners, um, so many over the years, you start to see patterns. Right. You start to see things that, challenges that they run into. So what I talk about is the first half of the book is, what you don't know can hurt you. Mm, so I talk mm. about key things that you need to know as a business owner mm -hmm. um, to be successful. And in each chapter, I have at least two examples of people that I've worked with right. so that you can identify right. with it. And you know, my chapters, you know, the first chapter is really about um, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. you're somewhere for a reason. Mm -hmm. Why are you there? Where are you trying to go? Right, right, right. And, and, and so, and so you build it up. Um, you know, talk a little bit about you know, share a story for the audience about you know how that has been helpful. This first, you know, even the, you know, even uh, some of you mentioned in the book. Okay. Well, you know, definitely, you know, one example and one thing that is key. Um, the second chapter in my book is called "What Is Your Most Important Job." Mm. And mm. most business owners don't know that, mm. and to their detriment. Right. So right. your most important job is S and M, mm. and mm. not the one you're thinking about, <laughs> but sales and marketing. This isn't that kind of show, right? <laughs> <laughs> and what what we what we do is talk about your target market. 
Yeah. Interesting. The, well, we're going to take a break now, but I want to. I want to leave the audience here. We're going to see a couple commercials and co <clears throat> and come back. This is really really important. So Excellent. we'll see you after the commercial break. Hello, this is Andrew Frazier. Today's topic is changing your perspective. Because many times for business owners and entrepreneurs, you get stuck in a certain place. And the only way you can move beyond it is changing your perspective. In my book, Running Your Small Business Like a Pro, one of the key themes that I talk about is your business can go no further than you're prepared to take it. So as a result, you have to continue to evolve, develop yourself, because if you become stagnant, your business becomes stagnant. One of the things that you helped to point out to me was that if I don't start thinking of my school as a business, I won't have a school. If you're not being the business person of your business, who's being the business person of your business? For those of, those of you who just joined us, I'm talking with a friend of mine, Andrew Frazier, from Small Business Like a Pro. Uh, we were just talking about S&M. Not that kind. We were talking about sales and marketing, um, and so uh, so finish your, your your thought. You were talking about um, you know a lot of people don't know why they're there. Why, you know what their what their responsibility is. Right. So as a business owner, your, your most important job is sales and marketing, and you really need to be spending at least two hours per day on marketing. Two hours per day on marketing. Wow. wow. And sales is not marketing. Mm -hmm. So you know, a lot of times there's not differentiated right and since it's your most important job you need to learn how to do it well so mm -hmm. business owners need to do as much training and learning about marketing and about sales so they can do it better because that's the biggest thing that's going to impact the success of your business give give the two second what's the difference between sales and marketing okay really marketing is about building a relationship right. with your customers and clients and sales is transactional right um, and marketing is about strategy, right. building a strategy to be profitable, mm -hmm. um, looking at your business holistically. Mm -hmm. So really, it's a lot more than PR and advertising. It's the whole strategy and bringing it all together to make your business successful. It is amazing, and I do obviously a lot of consulting as well, how many folks don't really understand the difference. They think, my goal is just to sell as much as I can. Right. You know, and, and, uh, and, and they don't really step back and, and, and think about that. So what else? What else? What's next? Okay, you, you, you know, what's kind of next in the process? Well, one of the things uh, this year, I'm you know, really taking my business to the next level mm -hmm. and helping to take helping other people to take their businesses to the next level. Okay. So my goal is to help 1,000 small businesses grow their, this year. So one, one, wow. wow, and yeah. the majority of those will be family businesses probably. Yes. And so, so 1,000, now how are you going to do that? Okay. That's a well, great goal. One of the things that we put together is the SB Pro Growth Challenge. Okay. And it's a challenge uh, to challenge business owners to grow their revenues. Mm, so okay. the winners, um, we have $20,000 in cash prizes for the winners. Nice. And to win, what you're going to do is grow your revenues the most 2020 versus 2019. Okay. Um, there's a winner in terms of dollar growth, mm -hmm. and there's a winner in terms of percentage growth. Percentage growth. Okay, now how do they find out about this? This is a great opportunity for every, every business. And well, how do they find out about that? Um, all you got to do is go to our site. Okay. Um, Say that again for those that missed it. What's the website? Well, we have, we have a site specifically for it. Okay, yeah. It's sbprogrowthchallenge.com. sbprogrowthchallenge.com. Okay. Right. And you can get there through my regular site as well. But okay. But that takes you directly there. Okay. And not only is it a challenge where you can win money, mm -hmm. but the most important piece is a challenge where we help you to learn how to market mm -hmm. and how to sell more effectively so that you can grow your revenues. Mm -hmm. So that's the most valuable piece because if we can help you grow your revenues by 10, 20, 50, 100,000, right. you're going to make a whole lot more money. Right. And that's right. really what we're here to do is help businesses grow. Well, well one of the things that I like about, um, about what you're doing is that you really get people to focus and become professional. Yes. See, so often we think we're a business person, but really becoming a professional is a whole different level. 
It's not just about owning a business and being an entrepreneur or just being a family business. It's about taking to the next level. If you're going to be a, an athlete, you want to make the, you know, the NBA or the NFL or pro tennis, you know, why not do the same for small business? That's why I really like what you're, what you're doing. What's next? All right, so that's the side. What about the expense side of this? So you have okay. the revenue side. What about the expense side? Well, you know, in business, if you're familiar with Michael Gerber, mm -hmm. he talks about working in your business, but you have to move to working on your business. Right, right. But nobody ever tells you how do you work on your business. Right, right. So really, what right. I do in there and when, when I'm working with businesses mm -hmm. has helped them learn how to do that because less than 5% of business ever work on their business effectively. So, so for the audience, again, how do you, how do, so working in your business is what? Just showing up every day, doing what you do, and, and as opposed to working on your business. What's the difference? The difference is working in your business, you're like an employee mm -hmm. or a supervisor. You're focused on the day-to-day. -day, right, right. Okay? Right. And most people never get above that. Mm. But to really have, run your business professionally, you have to have management. Right. So, you have to focus, you know, you're not going to get there if you don't plan to do it, but you have to get to the management level or mm -hmm. manager where as a manager, you're working on helping to optimize things, right. helping uh, to build capacity, right. you know, helping with strategy. So you're really looking at a longer term piece than a supervisor. Right. And it's really hard to be a supervisor and a manager at the same time. Right. Just like in, in larger businesses, you got supervisors, you got managers mm -hmm. for a reason. Right. Um, right. So, you know, helping the professionally and as a manager, you know, one of the big things you find I've found is business owners don't like to use numbers. Right. So hmm. Um, but you can't work on your business without numbers because right. you don't know what's going on with your business without understanding the numbers. So right. I help business owners understand their numbers, mm. start to look at them, <coughs> help to put together key performance indicators right. so that you have a plan, a budget, you look at how you're doing versus it, right. and you can make decisions on a timely basis to improve your business. Excellent, excellent. So, so working on your business as opposed to just in your business, is there a next step once you do that, after the, that? There is. Mm -hmm. Once you master that, you, you step up to where you're an executive. Right. And you're really working on the future of your business. Right. So you're spending most of your time doing strategic planning. Mm. You're, you know, you're, you're spending your time looking at how you can expand your marketplace as well as how you can exploit your current target market. Right. So really looking at how do you grow significantly, and, and that's really executive type skills. Right. Well, one of the things when I was talking to Paul Stack, you know, we, we, we talked about the fact that if you aren't moving forward, you're moving backwards. Yes. And, and, and if you're working in your business, it's very hard to move forward, right? Yes. The, I, um, yeah, I actually recently wrote an uh, article called Grow or Die. Oh, really? Because oh, wow. you know, as a business, if you're not growing, you're moving backwards. Right, right. And a key thing that I always tell people is your business can only move as far as you're prepared to take it. So mm. if your business is stuck, it's because you're not right. prepared to take it and you have to learn and develop. And that's one of the things I work with people is help them learn and develop things that they need to know. Wow. Um, but it's critical to be continually learning and developing yourself. And the hardest piece is you have to change to take on the new roles mm -hmm. because each role has a different um, key attributes and key things you need to do to do it successfully. Well, one of the things I've, I've talked to a number of my guests, the family mm -hmm. businesses, about consulting, you know, consulting. And, and, and there's, a, there's a misconception to say that, well, if I take a proposal, I'm going to have to hire someone. I'm saying that every consultant, I mean, every family business should have a consultant and entertain some proposals. They may not be ready for it right then and there, but you don't know what you don't know. And so, you know, you know, taking a proposal from you or, or from me or from us to really say, well, what about finance? What about outsourced CFO? What? Let me see it on paper. Because then sometimes you can't afford not to do it. And so um, can you just say a couple success stories of uh, short success stories of some of the consulting that you've done okay. over, the last year, over the years? Well, uh, definitely different ones. You, you, you interviewed Paul right. earlier right. and you know, really had an opportunity to spend time with him, helping him to work on his business more effectively. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we started, um, 
he had plenty of business, mm -hmm. but his operations couldn't keep up with the business that he had. Right, right. So one of the things we worked on is helping him build capacity. And some people think that's a good problem. Oh, I got too much business for my, that's a bad problem, right? That, that, that's something that you've got to address. Right, because customer service is key. You, you want to keep your customers. Right. But um, not only that, if you're growing too fast, you can go out of business just as fast. Right. Um, so you have to have your financial plans and cash flow managed because you're investing a lot of money before you're getting it back in. Right. So oh, yeah. it's it's easy to run out of money if you don't plan and you're not careful about what you do. And, and he's such a dynamic person and, and really a visionary. And so it's it's a, he's just a great model of, of how a consultant and a business leader can work together. Now, you have some other things coming up, the Power Breakfast. T talk about some of the other things you're working on. Very, very exciting stuff. OK, great. <clears throat> well, um, as you know, I've done a Power Breakfast event for mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and business owners for the past nine years. Yeah, it's been a long time. And, it's been great, um, great stuff. You've got to go. It's good stuff. Right. And we brought in business thought leaders from around the world. Mm -hmm. Actually, Dale spoke at one of them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That was wonderful. And um, it's a really way to get small business owners an opportunity to get exposure to people that they generally wouldn't have access to. But not only that, I focus and make sure that the, t the, the messages are small business focused mm -hmm. with things that small business owners can implement immediately. Right. And they're also hearing from people who actually are doing mm -hmm. or have done what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So critical because, um, you know, it's one thing to talk about stuff. It's another thing to have done it. Right, right. And, and, and so the, uh, the family businesses, the small businesses, um, I mean, that's, that's a must. You've got to grow. You've got to get out there, get as much information. Maybe you don't think you can hire a consultant, but you, you can f easily afford to go to these, these power breakfasts. What other things do you have on the, on the docket? What other okay. kinds of programs? Well, you know, one of the key things is, you know, I recognize the cost is hard for people to bring someone in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, I can understand that. And not everybody can afford it. But that's one of the reasons why I wrote my book. Right, right. Because that's the equivalent of 10 hours of coaching with me. Nice, nice. So you're going to learn things you need to know. And even if you're going to work with me, that's a great start. Because then we can move forward into more complex stuff. Right. And I'm in the process of writing two more books. Well, wonderful. So wonderful. one book is on marketing okay. and, you know, talking about key things because that's the most important job for business owners. And the other one's about obtaining financing because, right. Right. you know, obtaining financing is a mystery for a lot of business mm -hmm. owners. And most don't get it because they don't deserve it because they're not prepared. So mm -hmm. helping them to do that um, is key. And so, you know, I've got those coming up. I also have a virtual summit okay. on business financing, so that's going to be available online. And we're going to have 30 to 40 key people um, who could talk about different areas of business financing to educate business owners so that they could prepare and understand what they need to do and what type of financing they might want to do. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. The, the, well, well, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're really at the, at the end of our time. Um, now, you have some online training to say, can you say in, in, in two seconds? Just yes. Online, so, yeah, the online training. Yeah, I also developed an online university called SB Pro, okay. Small Business Pro University. Wonderful. And it's at sbprou.com. sbprou.com. Well, well, Andrew, thank you so much. This All has right. been uh, wonderful. And uh, I hope those in the audience are listening, um, you know, you need to at least entertain the idea of having a consultant with your practice. Yes. So thanks for joining us on Family Business World, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you, Dale. Thank you.